Tell me if you agree with these examples. Number one, when you buy a flat, sometimes you don't get possession. So you keep on circling the quotes and it takes years to solve that case. Similarly, when you buy a land, what happens? That the Patwari at the back end would have named this land on someone else, right? So they becomes the owner. You again keep on circling the quote to figure out that case. Similarly, when you transfer money to your friend in US or Europe, the bank charge 3%, 4%, 5% commission on it. And we as poor people keep on paying and paying and paying. So there is this entire middleman economy that has come up in the market unfortunately in almost everything and it seems like that people are getting super frustrated with this entire ecosystem. Is there a systemic way in which this problem can be solved? The answer is yes and the answer lies in the concept of smart contracts. So for the next 10 minutes I will try to explain the concept of smart contracts in a very easy to understand language and I will show you five real applications of this concept and then towards the end of the video I will tell you how to make money from smart contracts. Now in order to understand what smart contracts are first and foremost we need to understand what dumb contracts are. So dumb contracts in simple language means buying a house right so when you buy a house from a builder you sign a contract that you know what I'm going to pay you 50 lakh rupees and at the time of possession I will pay you another 25 lakh rupees and you give me the house. All the parties sign that contract and towards the end the builder backs out and takes away your money also and you have to keep on circling the quote in order to get your money back. So that is a very dumb contract and it favors the rich. Now if the rich person has a really good legal team behind them they can really mess you up. So that's a pretty dumb contract and it honestly does not work in everyone's favor. Yes, on one hand you can say that you know what law is impartial this that but in honesty law works well for rich people and it unfortunately does not work well for poor people and you can comment right I mean if you don't agree with this statement you can comment in the comment box. I would love to read your commentary on it. So on the flip side a smart contract is a contract that works according to the conditions that have been laid out. So in simple terms a smart contract is a code that is written on a blockchain network. Let me break that down for you. What is a blockchain network? Blockchain network can be something like Ethereum or it can be Bitcoin or it can be Solana. It can be Cardano. All these are blockchain networks and these piece of codes are written on these blockchain networks. For example, right now Ethereum, which is a blockchain network, it supports the most number of smart contracts. Now you'd say Akshat, okay, you know what? This is like tech run contract. Now why should I trust like tech run contracts? I would rather trust code. I would rather trust lawyers. I would rather trust this and that. Now here are the reasons why you should be trusting smart contracts. Now the first point about smart contract is that these are trustless. And please listen to all these points. These are super important next gen tech. So if you understand it, you will be able to build a career in this. So from that perspective, the first key thing that you need to know about smart contracts is that these are trustless. Now why trustless? Because this is a piece of code. It does not depend on counterparty. Parties. It does not depend on you and me. It does not depend on the network. As long as this contract has been written, all the conditions that have been written will get fulfilled if the conditions are met. So in order for a smart contract to get executed, it's not as if that courts or lawyers will have to step in. So that is the first key thing. The second key point is that smart contracts are autonomous. So autonomous simply means that these are independent. Once a smart contract has been written, it cannot be changed. You can scrape off the entire smart contract and create a new smart contract, but you can't make modifications to an existing smart contract. So that is the reason why it is autonomous, it is independent, it's not as if that someone can influence it and change the set of conditions that have been written on the smart contract. The third key thing about smart contract is that smart contracts are decentralized. So centralization means for example if you want to transfer money to your friend in the US or Europe in order to transfer that money you have to go through a bank. Similarly if you have a feud with the builder who is not giving you your house despite you giving money to him or her then you have to go to the court and court is the centralized authority that will take care of everything. They might or might not that's a different thing but the point is that there is a centralized authority that kind of powers up that contract. In decentralization there is no central authority at play because the technology has been designed in such a manner that you don't need any kind of oversight. Now I'll give you specific example so that this point becomes more clearer in the next section but let me wrap up the fourth and final point that these set of conditions or the smart contracts are transparent in nature anyone can read it on the blockchain network now you might have also heard of something called as dApps which is decentralized applications now decentralized applications are nothing but a collection of smart contracts on a blockchain network so instead of having one smart contract you have a series of smart contracts that create a dApp 
So with that said, let me start explaining you the applicability of these smart contracts. That is where the fun starts. And let me point out to five specific utilities. Now, the first key utility of smart contracts is that they allow you to do something called as flash loans. Now there are dApps, as I said, that dApps is nothing but a collection of smart contracts. And these dApps could be things like Aave protocol, Aave or Compound. Now these are essentially DeFi apps, decentralized finance dApps or apps, you can say them. And what they allow you to do is that they act as a bank. So what you can do via smart contracts is you can borrow, let's say 100 Ethereum from Aave protocols. And you will have to repay this flash loan within a few seconds. Now, why would you borrow money for a few seconds and then return it? Because of the fact that in crypto market there are serious arbitrage opportunities for example if let's imagine just for hypothetical purpose that on vault you can buy an ethereum at 4 lakh rupees and on binance the price of this ethereum is 5 lakh rupees then what are you going to do you are going to take this loan and you are going to buy stuff from vault and then you are going to sell it off on binance you will get that money and then you will return it to the Aave protocol so that is a simple concept and utility of flash loans now you can't do this via a traditional bank but you can do this via a decentralized system now that is just one utility of a smart contract because smart contracts are coded if you buy it then you have to return it therefore in the crypto world whenever you are borrowing money so these are over collateralized loans so people who are lending money to protocols like Aave or compound even their money is safe because the entire smart contract utility is at play now the second key utility of smart contracts is that it allows and powers up the nft market now nft i have come out with separate set of videos you can go and watch it so you understand more about the nfts but let us pick the example of lakshmi nft that i have spoken about quite extensively i am an investor in totality corp and what lakshmi nft does is that there are set of rules it's a smart contract on a blockchain network that is what a lakshmi nft technically is now it has certain set of conditions for example they say that lakshmi nft will give you an apy of of 18% to 108%. So that NFT has a finance return associated with it. Additionally, there is one more condition that, hey, if you go and participate on the games that are coming up on Zion verse, then you will get additional reward or money. Now, why should you trust these type of NFTs? Simply because of the fact that they have been written on a smart contract and the set of conditions can't be changed. Now, the same logic applies that when people say that, hey, you know what, Bitcoin is only going to have finite Bitcoin supply of 21 million Bitcoins and it will be released at a certain rate. Now, why should you trust the Bitcoin network? Simply because of the fact that this condition has been written on the blockchain network on a smart contract and it can be seen and verified by everyone. Now these gaming NFTs are becoming like a mega market simply because of the fact that these gaming NFTs have more value compared to traditional games. I've given this example multiple times, so I'll keep it short. For example, when you go and buy a sword on God of War, there is no way you can get your cash back by selling it unless you're doing a private sale. But on a blockchain network, you can easily go and sell your NFTs. For example, right now, if you own Lakshmi NFT and if you want to sell Lakshmi NFT, then you can unstake it and you can sell it on a website called as OpenSea. So that is the utility of smart contracts in the NFT gaming space. Now, the third utility of smart contracts is legal cases altogether. For example, the state of California has come up with a mandate where they would issue legal certificates by using blockchain networks. Now that is such a time saving process to execute. For example, imagine two people getting married in California, that marriage can be easily validated. So there is no problem there. The moment it gets inputted onto the computer network, a license can be issued to you automatically. So that is the utility behind it that you don't need to put an entire team behind it. Think about it this way. For example, if there are 10 churches in California that are married people then the pastor the moment he inputs five set of conditions for example he might be asked to upload 10 photographs of married people then a short video then a bunch of three four other different things the moment the pastor does that who is a registered officer then the blockchain network will automatically issue a certificate if you and your girlfriend or you and your boyfriend are getting married so that is the simplicity behind it it saves a lot of time lot of hassles in terms of lining up now comes the fourth utility of smart contracts which is in the real estate domain now, real estate domain has had two primary problems. One is that the fractional ownership is really, really tough. For example, if you want to invest in a property, then you might not want to invest like 50 lakhs or 60 lakhs. Then you would want to take fractional ownership of let's say 20,000 or 30,000 a month in some property. That is very difficult to do, but you will say, okay, Akshat, we have REITs. We have a bunch of other fractional investment options. But the problem with REITs and other existing instruments right now is that you do not know who the party at the back end is 
who is managing that REIT. What if that particular parent company goes bankrupt, your investment will go down with it. And there is not enough clarity around it. So it becomes like a very opaque industry for you to go and invest. But however, what you can do is that you can go on the smart contract and try to figure out if someone has released a contract which involves taking some real estate positions. Now, the second big problem that happens in the real estate market is that the brokerage is very, very high. So every time you sell a house, every time you buy a house, you have to pay a lot of commissions and it becomes a headache for you. Again, on top of that, the process is so headache oriented. For example, you will have to go to registrar office, get the legal work done, get your photographs taken, whatnot. It's a headache oriented thing. Now imagine a world where if I have to sell my house, I simply release a smart contract. I put the price as that, okay, you know what? I'm going to sell my house for one crore and I put it on a smart contract. And if you transfer this amount to my account number, this, this house becomes your. And similarly, if I own a mall, for example, then I can come out with a fractional ownership arrangement. For example, I can say that, hey, I have this mall and the price of this mall is 10 crore rupee and I want people to invest in it and you get 1% share if you transfer me 5 lakh rupees. So that entire thing can be verified, read, understood. Now, one question that you might have is that, Akshat, who does the verification at the back end that you really own the mall or you really own a house. So this concept can be explained by something called as Oracle. So Oracle simply means that there are real world indicators or things or verifiers that verify these contracts in the physical world. Now I'll come up with a separate video on this, the entire mechanics of verification that, but I hope that you get the point that there is a mechanics at play to bridge this technology world of smart contracts and physical world. Now, just to give you some examples, now the state of Georgia is transferring its land registry system to crypto oriented networks to do this verification faster. Similarly, similar models are being incorporated in Dubai where real estate can be sold to international investors by the use of smart contract technology and blockchain networks. Now, the final use of smart contracts is the use around advanced technologies. You might have heard of something called as artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence simply means that as humans, we learn from our set of experiences that we go travel, read, and we improve our knowledge set. Similarly, computer or machines, they learn through data sets. So once you feed them more data, they learn more stuff around it. So as the world gets more driven by artificial intelligence, machine learning, then what would happen is that we would have the need for even advanced smart contracts. So these advanced smart contracts are self-learning or self-propagating type of smart contracts, which is beyond the scope of this video for me to explain. I will again make a separate video on this topic altogether if there is enough interest. But to cut the long story short, smart contracts in their existing form have proven to be useful. And there are companies like Zilliqa, which are creating advanced smart contracts in this space. Now going forward as the use of tech, as the use of artificial intelligence, machine learning, internet of things picks up, this is going to become a very prominent space and smart contracts are going to find even more use. So this brings us to the final part that, okay, Akshat sounds very futuristic, sounds really nice, but how do I make money out of it right now? Okay, three options. Number one, relatively the safest that you directly go and invest in blockchain networks. For example, if you go and invest in different set of good cryptos, for example, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Cardano, these are all alpha grades or top grade cryptos right now, you can go and invest in this and you automatically become a part of the smart contracts ecosystem. So that is the easiest way you can use your vault account to do that. I myself purchase cryptocurrencies by using vault. The second option, which is a slightly riskier option is that you go and invest in NFT based gaming projects. Now gaming NFTs are becoming super popular and they are gaining a lot of momentum, especially because of the fact that there is real use case of these gaming NFTs. For example, an entire economy in Philippines has come up by playing a game called as Axie Infinity. And in 2020 lockdown, people made more money playing Axie Infinity in Philippines compared to their day jobs. So from that perspective, there is real world utility of these gaming NFTs. And you could consider purchasing some gaming NFTs. I'll come up with a separate video on how you can make money through NFTs. So I'll try to do a more detailed video. Let me know in the comment box. Third and finally, which is the riskiest method is that you can invest in startups or invest in ICOs. Now these are super risky investments, so definitely not an investment advice, but you can definitely consider taking some speculative positions. For example, in the past, there have been massive projects that started out really low, but have given 10,000% returns also. 
but you need to invest in these type of projects really, really early. Now in the crypto domain, you can either participate in ICOs, which is called as initial coin offering. So ICOs are very similar to IPOs in the stock market. So whenever a new company that you have known, for example, Zomato released its IPO and people jumped on it right on day one. Similarly, ICOs or crypto coins or NFTs also get released on different crypto networks. So you can go and purchase them when they are just launching. The second method here would be private investments and you can participate in this by using the telegram group information now this is super dangerous please don't do it i would generally not recommend you to do this but because i'm covering all these options therefore i'm telling you all the parts so this is the basic overview of how you make money but if you are starting out just consider investing in good crypto project because you will automatically get invested in the smart contracts economy i hope you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up and i'll see you tomorrow